Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with a video about chemical and physical changes and toward the end we're going to talk a little bit more about density. A chemical change is what's up first. A chemical change takes place when substances react to form different substances. For example, we have a rusting nail here. This nail did not originally have rust on it. This rust is a chemical the result of a chemical reaction with the substances of the nail and with the air. Uh, it forms iron oxide. Iron and oxygen will form iron oxide, which is rust. So you have what you originally had is not what you ended up with. You did not have the rust. Same thing with a burning match. A burning match is a, a chemical change also. You have the wood you have the ignite, ignition stuff on the end that ends up forming a gas once it is lit. So that would also be a chemical change. And you can see some other chemical changes here. Anything that is burned is liable to have a chemical change. Rusting is a chemical change. Yes, cooking has chemical changes in it. Uh, here we have this fire. The wood is what is being changed to other substances, primarily different types of gas and ashes that are a result of this. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell when the chemical change has taken place. But if you can take, if you can take uh, what has happened and end up having a formula like this, Whenever you have two products or one or more products that have an arrow beside it, that arrow means yields. We have two products yields another product here. We have hydrogen, which is a gas, and oxygen, which is a gas, and they form water, which is a liquid. And that happens more than we think. Here we have propane and oxygen, which is forming carbon plus water plus heat and light. Same thing happened with the nail here. You had the iron and the oxygen, which ended up forming a compound called iron oxide. And wow, you can just go down the list here and see all kinds of stuff, which is one or two things, which is turning into something else. And that's the big key for what a chemical change is. A chemical change ended up with substances that's not how you started out. So sometimes it's hard to tell when you've had a chemical change because it happens all the time. But here are some signs that tell you you might have had a chemical change. Sounds like a redneck joke. You might be a redneck if, well, you might have a chemical change if you've had some kind of release of bubbles. Don't know if you can see it very well, but there's a test tube here that has a lot of bubbles in it. Many times when two things go together and react with each other, bubbles form, and that is a sign that a gas has been produced. So that's often a sign of a chemical change. Sometimes things change color, like rust changes the color of the nail. Sometimes it produces an odor. You can see a person holding their nose here. Uh, sometimes it releases heat. Now I'm going to do the heat more than the light here. If you feel over top of where two things have been combined together and it's producing heat, you probably have had a chemical change and something called forming a precipitate. A precipitate, well, it's just a solid, as you can see down here, it is a solid that sometimes forms when you have a chemical reaction. So there is such a thing as a chemical change and you have a physical change. Now, a physical change, you do not end up changing products. You do not start with two things and end with two different things. You start and end with the same substances. Here, you're, you're doing, you're hammering, not hammering, you're putting an ax into this log and you're going to end up with two logs, but it's still wood. No matter how, no matter how many times you hit it with this ax, it's going to still be wood. Here you have chocolate. If you heat the chocolate up, you're going to have a puddle of chocolate. It's still chocolate. You did not have a chemical change. Here you have a glass. You've broken the glass, but it's still made of glass. Also, something a little more tricky is the states of matter. Here you have ice, you have water, and you have vapor, which is coming up here. Anytime you have a change of matter, like from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, it is going to be a physical change. It's not a chemical change. It's a physical change. 
whenever you change in the states of matter. There are some terms that are identified with physical changes and specifically this physical change. You have melting point. A melting point is going to be, it refers to when a solid becomes a liquid. Solid, liquid. The melting point of ice is what, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. That is the melting point. You have boiling point, which doesn't talk about this change, but boiling point refers to this change. Whenever water boils, doesn't look like it's boiling here, but that's part of how the vapor is, is gotten. Whenever it boils and releases a lot of gas in the air, that's called the boiling point. Sublimation refers to when a solid goes straight to being a gas. When a solid goes straight to being a gas, it kind of skips over this water part. Now that doesn't happen very often, but I believe something like liquid nitrogen will do that. Uh, I guess it wouldn't be liquid nitrogen, it'd be dry ice. My bad, I had my things confused. Dry ice will end up turning into water vapor without going into the water. That's dry ice, the frozen carbon dioxide is what that is. Viscosity is the degree in flow that a liquid has, and that would be a physical property. The degree of flow, for example, water has more viscosity than honey because water flows better than honey. Honey, the it, it's all sticking to each other. Water flows more than oil. Uh, there are lots of different things that water has more viscosity than than other liquids. Now, there are some terms that you see called chemical properties and physical properties. Chemical properties are the characteristics of a material that become evident whenever it undergoes a chemical change. So whenever you have fl flammability, toxicity, reactivity, combustion, these are characteristics of that property, say a match or say gasoline, these are characteristics that help it make a chemical change. Same thing here with physical properties. Physical properties like color and hardness and odor and density and viscosity. Those are physical properties. It doesn't help them help it change to a different property. It's just properties that end up not really changing it, but it, it not really changing substances, but changing the form of it, like what the color is, what the odor is, what the density is, and so on. So physical properties are also evident when the material undergoes a physical change. So all of these would consequently not only be properties, but a physical change could take place on any of these. I see the word boiling in here also. Do you get the difference between a chemical property and physical property? Chemical has to do with the change, chemical change, physical changes are not changing substances but it has to do with that. Anyway, I guess I better go on to density. Ooh, density. That is a physical property. Density is defined as mass over volume. And density is often seen when comparing objects, well, like a basketball and a bowling ball. They're pretty much the same size, but their mass is much different. The bowling ball here will have a much heavier mass than the basketball because the basketball is made of air. It has air inside where the bowling ball has like what, concrete or something? But anyway, a bowling ball is much heavier than a basketball and it is more dense because it's a similar size but it weighs a lot more. So that's what density is. You have like cheesecake is more dense than regular cake and a brick is more dense than a loaf of bread. Lots of different similarly sized things where one of them remarkably has a remarkably higher mass. Density is in grams per milliliter. Now, milliliter sometimes is used with the term cubic centimeters. Let me write this down here. Uh, cubic centimeters is centimeters cubed. And whenever you hear a doctor prescribe 20 cc's of some liquid, cc's is cubic centimeters. So when you're talking about volume, 
It may be in milliliters or it may be in cc's, which is cubic centimeter. But anyway, density has to do with the term buoyancy also. Uh, buoyancy is the ability of something to float, and I know we have mentioned it before about with the, with the pressure unit. But density, the objects that are less dense, objects that are less dense will float, well, like a basketball. A basketball would float in water. It is less dense than water. Now, I have not dropped a bowling ball in water lately, but I know bowling balls are more dense than basketballs, and it wouldn't surprise me that a bowling ball would be more dense than the water. So any object, whether it's a bowling ball or not, that is more dense than the water, well, you know what it's going to do. It's going to sink. So density is the determining factor in what floats and what sinks, the determining factor in buoyancy. You know... We have to do some problems on density. You can see that I've done some of these because I knew we would be kind of short on time at the end of the video. But let's go one at a time. A block of aluminum occupies a volume of 15 milliliters and weighs 40.5 grams. So we're looking for the density. So what was the density formula? The density formula was going to be D density equals mass over volume. So we have the mass, which is 40.5 masses in grams, and we have the volume, which is here, 15 milliliters. So all we have to do is just have 40 divided by 15, and we will do that for, uh, come on, computer, for, I don't know why my computer's being slow today. Oh, here it is, 40 divided by, 15 equals, and we have 2.666, so two significant figures, that would be 2.67, and what is it? Grams per milliliters. Let's take a look at what we have on the next one. 306 grams of mercury metal fills a 22.5 milliliter graduated cylinder. What is its density? Hey, same formula here. Density equals mass over volume. The mass, of course, is going to be in grams, so the mercury weighs 306 grams. The uh, density volume, I should say, is 22.5. 306 grams fills up to 22.5. So I'm interested to see whether or not you have heavy, whether mercury is heavier or aluminum is heavier. I kind of have a suspicion. Let's see, 306 divided by 22.5. 306 divided by 22.5 equals 13.6. Oh, 13.6 is way more dense than aluminum was. So 13 point, bleh, my bad. 13.6, and that is grams over milliliters. I'll just mark that out. Okay, finally, find the mass. Ooh, we're not looking for density anymore. We're looking for mass, so we're going to have to solve for mass. Find the mass of 250 cubic centimeters of benzene. Cubic centimeters, you may remember, equates to milliliters. Its density, and we're already given density, is 0.877 grams per cubic centimeters, which is just the same thing as milliliters. So we will have to solve for M. To do that, I seem to remember that we multiply both sides by V. The Vs will cancel, and we are equal with M equals DV. Already put these in. N 250 centimeters cubed. No, you do not cube this out. That is just a unit times 0.877 uh, grams over cubic centimeters. So this is 250. I better hurry because I'm running short on time. Times 0.877. And let's see what we have. Oh, what did I do? We have 250 times. 0.877 it equals this time 219.25 so that would be significant figures 219 and that would be mass is what grams 219 
grams. So the benzene was much less dense 